Welcome back to an introduction to basic concepts of maintenance and reliability. In this lecture, we are going to look at how reliability is calculated. The formula for calculating reliability is shown. You can see how reliability is a function of time, so as to define reliability of a machine based on the time period or time interval over which its reliability is needed to be calculated. It is calculated from Euler's number, which is a constant whose value is 2.7182 raised to the power of a product. This product is of what is called a failure rate, represented by lambda. And of course, the same time interval for which reliability is to be calculated for a machine. The only variable that needs explanation in this formula of reliability is the failure rate. Rest of the variables are self-explanatory. Failure rate as evident from the word is simply the rate at which a machine fails. That is, failures per hour, or failures per month, or failures per whatever unit of time you want to make a calculation in. So, for example, if the historical maintenance logs of an industrial pump show that it suffered 10 failures in 10,000 hours of operation, its failure rate would be 0.001. Here, it is important to mention an associated concept widely used in maintenance and reliability. It is the mean time between failures, or simply MTBF. MTBF is nothing but just the inverse of failure rate. It is just the flip way of saying things. In our example, mean time between failures or simply MTBF will be 1000 hours. It simply conveys that on an average the pump fails after a thousand hours of operation. So now if you want to calculate that what is the reliability of this pump for an operating time of 12,000 hours you can simply plug in the values and find out. It turns out to be 0.615%. So what is its interpretation? Its interpretation is that there is a probability of 0.615% that the pump will not fail during the next 12,000 hours of operation. In simple words, the pump is bound to fail in the next 12,000 hours of operation. It is quite understandable because remember that the pump had a high failure rate. On an average, historical data showed it fails every 1,000 hours. So it is not a surprise that its chances of not failing for 12,000 hours are close to zero. It is expected to fail 12 times in 12,000 hours. Since we discussed how reliability is time bound, what if we calculate its reliability for the next 500 hours of operation? So now, if you want to calculate that what is the reliability of this pump for an operating time of 500 hours, you can simply plug in the values and it turns out to be over 60%. You see, the reliability of the pump has significantly improved for 500 hours. Now this new reliability figure is telling you that there is a 60.6% .6 chance that the pump will not fail in the next 500 hours of operation. It is quite understandable based on the failure rate of the pump. We can plot a graph to see the trend of reliability 
over increasing operational time. Reliability of our example pump decreases with increase in time, which is understandable because it's high failure rate. The pump cannot be trusted to last for long intervals of time without a breakdown. An important thing to remember when using the formula of reliability is about the operating conditions. When calculating the failure rate, always remember to use historical data of machines with same or similar operating conditions. In the example of our pump, don't plug in the failure rate of a pump that maybe handles a different fluid because then the operating conditions are not same. Conclusively, Reliability gives you a prediction regarding future performance of a machine based on its history. And this future prediction varies with operating conditions and time. In simple terms, reliability is a measure of trustworthiness on the machine that it will not fail under stated conditions for a certain operating time. Many companies plug in the tested failure rates of machines to ascertain their reliability over time. It allows them to find what is the ideal time they should warrant their product for. They select a time duration in which the machine has high reliability, otherwise they might get too much warranty claims which may not remain financially viable. An important concept to highlight here is that of inherent or intrinsic reliability. It is the designed reliability of the system under ideal conditions. It is the best case scenario and the upper limit of reliability of a machine. No amount of maintenance can increase system reliability beyond its inherent reliability. Inherent reliability can only be improved by redesign. That is, you make changes in the design of the equipment. With this, let me conclude this lecture. I will explain the concept and calculations of series versus parallel reliability in the next lecture.